Well, let's call the meeting to order and start on time. Where is everybody? Well, Ruth is in New Mexico doing grandchild watching. Right. Julie, I mean, no. Sheila was not feeling well, so she oh. bagged it and sent Sergio oh. instead. Okay. Hi, Sergio. <laughs> and I don't know where Prudence is. I guess that would be appreciated. Okay. So we have Art, and David, and Julie, and Janine, and me. Yep. Yeah, he is, he is Susan. Megan is our guest. You are our guest, our last guest okay. in your career. The last guest of the year. So, welcome everybody. Have you had a chance to review the May minutes? And if so, any corrections? Not that I saw. I didn't see any either. <laughs> but that doesn't mean there are any. To approve. Okay, so uh, art motions to approve. Janine Sergio, how are you? Good, how are you? So Thank the you minutes know. are approved. You know, I need to be honest. Good morning. Good morning. So we're up to old business. Oh, we'll let things get settled. Okay. Okay, who's not here? Ruth and Sheila are excused. Right, that's right. Okay, I'm ready. Art made the motion for the minutes and Janine seconded. That's all we've done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, position update. Um, super excited. Uh, Kaylee Schoenbeck. Schoenbeck is our new clinician to counselor and she starts Monday. So super excited about that. Um, she is coming from Minnesota. She has a background in housing and hospice and working with older adults. She's licensed. Um, she is not bilingual. Um, and this was a position we had two applicants for the longest, longest time, but we kept saying it just takes the one right one and the one right one. And she applied and we were like, oh my gosh, blown away by her application. And then the interview, up. the interview went great. So super excited to have Can her. Can you spell her name? K-A-Y-L-E-I-G-H is her first name. And her last name is capital S-C-H-E-R-N-B-E-C-K. Thank you. B-E-C-K. S-C-H-E-R-N-B-E-C-K. And she, uh, Sherry has a place here in town. Her partner, uh, they relocated. The, her partner has a job in Boulder, so feels very comfortable. It feels really good. So we're excited for that. And when will she come? She starts Monday. 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 Yes. So she starts Monday, and her office will be right across from um, Melissa's. And the timing is really good because Brandy's going to be acting senior services manager, as you know, in my place. That um, so she, so Kaylee will be taking on the peer counseling program and a couple of other things just to kind of clear Brandy's plate a little bit um, to take on some of the other things. Um, with my position, my understanding, last I heard, there were seventeen applications. I think they have. No, there's only one you. Yeah, they've, um, <laughs> they're looking at interviewing nine, it sounds like, but I haven't heard that anything's been set up. They have just done application review. And Brandy is doing that with Jeff. Right. So that is unfolding. We have our custodian afternoon evening position is still posted. We have two applicants. You have interview, are you interviewing now? Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, <laughs> might be too late. I know. The, um, For a couple, I should. Uh, I think it's just just, just, just two. one possibly. We're debating on the second one. Okay. Um, and I was going to ask if you would check the if there's any other positions. I will today. We, we just haven't had any. Um, Megan is also hiring 
van drivers and sports officials for refereeing for softball games. The pay is not bad. <laughs> the pay is phenomenal. The pay. Yeah. What's the pay? $29 an hour. Here we go. Yeah. For what? For softball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's great. They you're receiving your retirement? <laughs> <laughs> I can't yes, get Yes, you have experience. I know. <laughs> Senior softball rules are different. Than I do, but I can't. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, so, some van drivers for some of our uh, trips so and hikes and things. So um, Megan's going to be ramrodding those those things. Uh, Becky Miller started. She is actually a customer here, and she is doing um, covering our front desk for our staff meetings and uh, cool. some of our trip registrations and things. So um, it's really um, nice to be able to welcome her. And so she's now become a part of the team, which is great. So that's kind of the update on staff. So I would imagine Jeff um, and or Brandy will reach out to you, Sue, about my position when they have a more firm sort of picture. If you haven't heard, uh, the library director also uh, resigned. She's headed uh, back to the Midwest to be closer to family. And her last day is next Friday. June 10th. Yeah. And, wow. There's a whole and so Jeff, Jeff is going to be filling that position as well. So <laughs> what's going on? Wow. So, so he's got a lot going on. And next, we have listed the board members sign up for lead on various goals. Yeah, I think this was actually Prudence's suggestion uh, from a couple meetings ago, maybe. Right, um, because um, but she and I talked about it, and she was not here, but I will mention her name. We had met um, for coffee, and we talked about the glacial movement uh, from... <laughs> various things um, and what we talked about is proposing that each person here takes one of the 2022 goals and they would either participate so for example um, the goals to fully participate in the well we did the ordinance change that's done right um, uh, to consider a name change to increase evening and evening programs, um, the rec master plan and the H well update, and select a foot process person. So one, a person on the book on this advisory council would take one of those goals and um, move it along and update us. You can update us quarterly <clears throat> and something moves along quicker then it would be an update more frequently so that there would be a responsibility for each advisory person to say, hey, let me tell you about the H12 plan update process. Um, this is what I attended a meeting or uh, nothing's going on with it or whatever the issue is. So that was the proposal on the table and that was accepted at the time so now um, what we'll be asking is for a person to pick one of the goals and be the lead, so to speak, on that goal. And the goals are uh, towards, they're back actually page. in this back page of your agenda. Right, page. So we can cross out four. Four. So is this, is this sort of in a sense of prudence? You know how we we're, we're all sort of assigned to a different um, uh, a different board as a liaison, right. Right? right? Then we're coming back and we're we're because these aren't things that we're actually doing. <laughs> these exactly. are things that somebody in the city is doing. Exactly, you're, you're just a liaison to those boards. And I know you're you're, I'm not sure whether you've been to one of your one month. No, month. no. no. Okay. No, <laughs> So that would be the goal. Yeah. 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 That would be the, the, the work to be done. Right. Gotcha. Very late. So the foot care provider, um, and 
like last week we had no response again even to the so we're going to have to go back to the drawing board on that so it would be really helpful to have somebody who's right. Brandy's contact for that in the absence of Sheila can that be you that can be me Jane okay Okay, one goal down. <laughs> well, and I think for number five, it makes sense that it's you, Susan, because you're already the liaison. Yep. Right? I'll take the rec master plan. Prudence. Um, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, um, kind of what, what, that entails what that means and whether is it optional is it going to be assigned um, it, it, can people have some time to think about it or for the is this plan? for just signing up sign you know Goal. assigning people to goals and and I guess I need to you know I want to understand what I'm signing up for. I mean, like mine with foot care, I know what, what that right, involves. You know. but, I, but I also know that, you know, some of it needs a little bit of explanation, like strengthening counseling services. Well, I know that that's an overall goal for, for us, for, for the senior center, but as far as the board is concerned, to what degree are we involved in that? What is what is it that our task is supposed to be? And that's why I'd like um, a little more explanation, sure. a little more sense of what I'm being assigned to, or or volunteering to take, you know, responsibility. Well, for. I'm not really sure that's a goal. It was in a past minutes, and I, when I was putting this list right. together, I pulled it out. I could, I, in all honesty, I didn't remember where it came from and what was behind it. So right. So I'm not sure. I think we could take that off. We hired a great counselor. <laughs> right, right. I, 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 don't think that's the only thing that I could think of is that, and hopefully this council will, will bring this as expertise. Is that we talked about outcomes. Um, and I know David, you had talked about it, and I know Susan had talked about it, is that, you know, we compile statistics saying, you know, 100 people were seen, mm -hmm. but what was the outcome of those 100 people being seen? Yeah, so that that that's refining something, that. Right, so that's something that probably, is this a new person young? I think it should stay on the list. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm thinking more of a... That's one of the areas I'd be interested in, right. by the way. Uh, kind of an overall, not, not that we want to get involved in the day-to-day -day stuff at all, yeah. that's, that's not it at, at all, but uh, to kind of take an overall look at what the counseling program is and the services that are provided and the outcomes that you have. And maybe there's nothing new that could be added, but maybe there could be. And you know, I'm a, I'm a good believer, uh, a strong believer in tangible kinds of outcomes. So I think the outcome piece is, is a great um, point, and I also think there is some funds, and maybe this is what you were going to say, that are going into behavioral health, the city as well as regionally, mm -hmm. and um, there's probably some opportunity. It looks, at least what I've seen right now, the funds for behavioral health seem to be really directed towards homeless you know, persons experiencing homelessness, teen suicide, some other categories have been, you know, floated mm -hmm. up as priorities, but please jump oh, in. Well, I was going to say, have you all, have, has the Senior Center already um, submitted its budget requests? Yeah. So, too late, or can you amend? Because there will be more money, and so... Right might be getting a share of the pie. Well, that's a different set of pots, but yes, but that Brandy's going to be a part of that, that city conversation. So for the, there's a lot of money out there right now, frankly, yeah. and so trying to get that all sorted out. And, and I'd also say this is, is an ongoing process. It's not something you do once and you're done with it. You're right. looking at it over a period of time. Over time. 
and maybe for next year's budget, uh, you'd want to take a look at and make some recommendations. And maybe, you know, the, the more people you can get on your side to support something, the better off you are. Right. So yeah. that stays. David, can we just kind of circle you in on that one? You said well, you had some interest. Let me ask a question first. The other area I'm, I'm interested in is the uh, uh, electrification costs, item number nine. And oh. I'm trying to follow that pretty closely, so I guess I'm wondering, could I do one and be a, a vice? <laughs> of course. Of course. Like where's, where's your heart lie? Which one? Which one? Well, uh, it's broken down the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's not kind of down the middle, really. I, actually, I'm, there's a lot of stuff going on with electrification right now. It's just fascinating what's going on right now. So I guess I'd say that's okay. That's it. Okay, so we have you down for two. One and a half. One and a half. Yeah, two. I I, I wouldn't mind being involved in both. Okay. But that's okay. And I think to Janine's point, I think just further refining what this means mm -hmm. as it as, as it goes, goes, it goes yeah. is a really good idea. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in the name change. I knew you would be. I'm also interested in evening and weekend programming. So, I, I can tell you with the rec center master plan, <laughs> theoretically, they're hiring, of course, a consultant, um, but that is sitting in purchasing. Um, Talk for, about glacial move. Right, exactly. So I'm hoping that uh, that will be moved along. Um, I have a remark on that that probably should get out there. Um, last night at the Housing Authority meeting, I introduced this idea that we need to um, change our procurement procedures or maybe rules because what we've had is now a series of three uh, RFPs from the city that have had zero bids. Um, and it seems to me, it, and what happens there is that when you get zero bids, it goes funk and nothing goes forward. And it seems to me that it is within the rules of, of ethical procurement that if that happens, you should be able to go out and begin direct recruiting. Right. So I hope so. we'll move something. Right. But, but uh, you know, right now, procurement's hands are kind of tied. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be following that up with this. Oh, that's great, Marsha. Good. And from the staff side, um, for the rec master plan, as well as for evening and weekend programs, that's really in Meg Megan's bailiwick. Right. So she, <laughs> she's also going to be um, participating and bringing information back um, about how that unfolds. So I think between the two of you, that's great representation. Mm -hmm. yeah. who, may, who ultimately makes that decision is it a city council so eventually decision or? yeah eventually the plan if one of the work is done and it should have pretty significant community involvement it would go to council for adoption and this is an update to the 2015 plan so council adopted that plan and this they will be asked to update uh, uh, adopt the update is my understanding too. Doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> yeah, I've been wrong before. And that is true also with the age well plan. Um, council adopted it in uh, 2016 and now it will be an update. So that pretty well covers it except for item number two. And since we have two board members missing, okay. well, I didn't sign up for anyone, but I mean, I'm willing to help out wherever. Well, the age well plan, the first step is actually on the agenda for um, signing up for conversations. It's new business item B. Oh, there and, we go. Awesome. How, how, how often yeah, are you? And, and my hope, my invitation is that all of you would participate in at least a conversation. Um, in the past, we did a conversation for all advisory board members throughout the county, Boulder, Lafayette, Louisville, we did it as a joint. And this year, 
um, as it's unfolding, we're really encouraging all advisory board members to at least participate in a conversation. Um, and these are the long ones. And then we have two Spanish ones uh, planned as well, you'll see there. So um, my hope is that all of you, and my invitation is that each of you would sign up for one of them. So um, there's uh, information in the go as well as at the bottom of your agenda. And you would just call the front desk and, and do that if you would. I mean, um, it is absolutely in keeping with the commitment for the purpose of this board to participate in that plan. So we would hope you would do that. Well, that's a great one for you all, especially in the um, Spanish ones. Mm -hmm. that... okay. And then we have um, a caregivers group um, specifically for Spanish speakers um, and then um, there is, at this point, no specific caregivers of older persons group design, designated for long long, but I suspect that's coming. So which one do you think? Uh, our, it's up to you. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm willing to do either one. It just... Yep, just pick one. It's the same process. So it's your, whether you'd like to be present in the Spanish <coughs> one or the English one, I think it's whatever date and time and your comfort. Well, I, I would like to, you know, I, I think it would be good for me to sit in on the Spanish speaking. Uh, okay. And if you want to tell me today, I can sign you up, or you could just call the front desk when you can check your calendars. And we don't so know what it is. We don't have dates on when they're meeting or anything. Yet. Yeah, the Spanish um, one is August 23rd from noon to 2 here at the Senior Center. Okay. So that'd be great. Art and Sue, I'll do the 25th, August 25th. Great. And you can, dump, I mean, you're going as individuals, so I think. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to check my calendar and make yeah, sure I before I need to do that. that. I can do that. <laughs> and I just want to say the other opportunity and um, is Boulder County Area Agency on Aging, and maybe Janine was going to mention this, will be doing the CASOA uh, survey countywide again. So that's the Community Assessment Survey of Older Adults. We've done this every four years. I, I don't know, this is probably the fourth or fifth one. Um, we will get data broken down by Longmont data. So um, we'll have countywide data, and then the four communities will each have their individual data which is great um so we're really saying please if you get it as an do older it. person do it <laughs> what is the s of casilla it's the um community assessment survey, survey of older adults and we have used um the guy in boulder tom miller national research center i think he's done some of the city customer satisfaction surveys as well so anyways that's oh, what is his name I think it's Tom Miller, but it's the National Research Center in Boulder. Um, so he piloted this survey with Boulder County many, many years ago, and then he took it nationally. So there, he is able to look at our data and do some comparison because he's done it across the nation. So we have continued to utilize him because that gives us good and comparison information, it gives us good historical information, and we also get an opportunity to ask four or five questions of our own design, which I don't think those have been determined yet. Cool. So, all right, June 28. And so, next uh, age well plan, I'm just going to say this is really in everybody. Is that okay? Yeah, uh, it's contra to what Prudence and Sheila had suggested, but it's okay, we're flexible. Right. <laughs> Annual report as an informational item. So June 28th at Council, uh, Brandy will be there representing me. Um, your annual report has, is going as an information item. Um, and um, the second item we have is our short-term assistance. We um, asked Boulder County for $50,000 for direct assistance to older adults. 
and 2,500 for direct assistance to caregivers. And that's based on what happened this last fiscal year, which we asked for 35,000 for seniors and 10,000 for caregivers. And we were really just weren't using the caregiver money. So we asked to roll the difference over into, senior, into older adult. So that money is designated for people 50 and above who live in Boulder County. So it's got some specificity. Um, we will continue with the $25,000 ask of the friends because that allows us to serve people 55 and above and they could be, you know, just outside Boulder County, but along one address or, you know, gives us a, some flexibility, both a little bit geographically and a little bit age wise. Hmm. And then, um, we will be getting money from Fraser Foundation out of Boulder, and that's going to be for eyes, ears, teeth, um, those kinds of things. And we don't know how much yet, um, but we'll get that money uh, this month. So I think uh, for the June 28th meeting, it's kind of exciting. We have good news and a good report. So if you're a watcher, if you're a goer, um, that'll be up. So I don't know if you want to say anything more um, about the report or um no i uh, other than uh it you said it's going as an informational item that could mean two things it means something at the very bottom of the packet that nobody reads or it could be a presentation is it going to be a presentation? i didn't set it up as a presentation okay um maybe some of us could some of us who get to speak at public invited to be heard um, would like to join us at the at the council meeting and call the council's attention to the information to the report. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> I know you got you got tab last time. Vice right? President, have a chance. So yeah, what what right. Marcia yeah. what Marcia is suggesting is just to be there between seven and eight, probably if yeah. it's a, and and just sign up. For public invited to be heard and just say you want to call attention to the informational item in the packet it's the annual report right um, at a minimum maybe mention a success or two Something. that you're particularly proud of would somebody else be interested in doing that i do have commitments on tuesday nights uh, but if, I'm, i'll be glad to do thank you, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll go and hold your hand. I'll, 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 I'll come for moral support. All right, okay, Julie. Julie. It's, <laughs> speed, speed. Oh, it's not limited to one minute. That's right. Oh, okay, so the only reason I'm going is because I want to sit behind the people I sat behind last time so I can take a picture of them reading along with the last time's call. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, paying some real good attention. Close attention. To attention. <laughs> cool. mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I think Marsha's right. You can all be there. You can speak or not speak, but if you're there, the speaker can certainly say, you know, we have board members in the room. Please stand, you know. There's a way to yeah. call attention to that. That was used a lot um, in, under the previous mayor, you know, right. bring a horde of people and say, um, um, only one or two of us are going to speak, but everybody's here to support this. Please yeah. stand. What time do we sign up again? Between 7 p.m. and 8 yeah. p.m. Well, so no, to no, sign up, to you sign need up. to get there by, say, 6.45 yeah. and sign up. Is there anything, just one question, is there anything in the report that the board feels strongly should be highlighted? So when, between now and June 28th, why don't you email? Yeah, I'll readings. email every, yeah, yeah. email me. You know, if there's something that you say, gosh, this was really something fantastic we did, please mention yeah. this. And to you, if you're going to speak, you need to be there by 6:45. Right. Public invited to be heard can go very quickly, which it did a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I heard, mm -hmm. um, or it can go really long, depending on how many people sign up to speak. So, generally, it's done by eight. Right. And sometimes you, by 7:30. Yeah. yeah. If you turn into a pumpkin. Then get there early so you can be it's early on early. the list yeah. because it's one first come right. serve. It's first right. serve. Right. There you go. Great. And Brandy will be there. Okay. As well. Open house ideas. 
So Megan is here. Shar is actually wasn't able to join us. She had a personal commitment with the family, so mm -hmm. she is uh, in California right now. But this, um, it's been several years since we did an open house, and Megan's never done an open house. So she is here today just to get some ideas for from you all what you'd like to see, what you want to do if, to be a part of it. If you have been a part of it in the past, what worked what didn't work and just spend a little bit of time, a few minutes, just giving some input to Megan uh, would be great. I'm excited about this. As soon as I started working here, it was like one of the first things I was like wanting to do because we have so many talented people in these drop-in groups that are kind of closed, you know, behind closed doors and they just aren't out to show the artwork that they're doing. The wood carvers are incredible. And the way that they're partnering like with resources by making these little birds, as well as just the... I don't think the board knows about the birds. Yeah, we don't know about the birds. Know about the birds. So, they um, bring the birds. You know, wood carvers are, um, they each have their own project that they're constantly working on. But um, one of them, I think it was Kurt, made this little bird. It's just a tiny little wooden bird, solid wood, real simple shape, not a lot of detail at all, just like the general outline, the general shape of a bird, no feathers or anything. Some of the things that they do are really detailed. And Char noticed that her husband who works at Woodley's has all these scrap pieces of wood. So now they just swing by Woodley's and pick up all this free little pieces of wood and make these sanded down sort worry of bird birds. shapes. They're like worry birds. Worry yeah. birds. So if we have people in with resources that have either been evicted or they're experiencing homelessness or they're just having a really crummy day, <laughs> We just have birds all over the office that you can just give someone to keep in their pocket and sort of worry on. So, oh, that, so that's just a nice, nice. Cool. yeah, they just like lay them really quickly. It's not a lot of work for any of the woodworkers, but um, so that's one just really lovely cross promotional mm -hmm. thing or just thing that we're doing throughout the senior center that people don't know about. So there's that, that sort of a piece, but also you know, some of the woodworkers that we have are like making jewelry with like little tiny pieces of wood and they're sanded down with like lilac wood or there's other people that are making bigger like, um, you know, something that would be a wall hanging or they're just really talented, little gnomes versus um, you know, walking sticks. They're really just different. And I, being ignorant to this, um, just didn't know the different types of wood carving that there is, the different types of wood. So I popped in there usually on Fridays just because it's interesting. Um, and they, they, for one, would be a really neat booth to have as an outlet to say, this is what we're doing. No matter what your experience level is, you can come in and try this. They've got extra wood. They've got some of the tools. Their tools can tend to be really expensive. Um, Donna Clement's studio time. Everybody's working on their own project. It's not like one class that Donna's teaching. Everybody's doing their own thing, and then Donna kind of comes by and helps with certain techniques. And if they're trying to make it look like a, a picture, like out of a magazine that they're working on, or a picture of their son with his dog, um, Donna's just there to like sort of help. And that's oil. All these things. That's all. Well, it's, and water. It's um yeah, that's all painting pretty much, mm -hmm. different mediums, but um. That's another one that people just don't realize. Not only would it be promoting Donna's class because she's so talented, but it's also just, I wonder if the woodcarvers have ever seen what talented people we have. Because it's not like we have their paintings up on the wall in the art room. We just, everybody brings their things home and works on them and then brings them back and then they all talk together. Um, not to mention even like current events. When we were doing Zoom, I got to sit in on both current events and the open forum, which are different sort of political conversations just how knowledgeable um, the people who are here I don't know what they did in the former life but they're um, whether they're conservative or liberal or whatever just this really good smart conversation that happens um, so yeah so if we showcase all of these things oh my gosh Alma with her porcelain art too <laughs> so a lot of it would be like art to have a booth and that kind of thing but I just think that um, since the pandemic, we've had so many people starting to come to the senior center who haven't been here before. We had a lot of new people in the trip registration. We just had people sort of reaching out that they've been isolated for so long and that they are looking for something for their parent even to to come. Um, just yeah, what all happens here? 
and sitting down and doing a get acquainted to explain all of the things that happens here takes hours. <laughs> so it would just be nice to sort of showcase it rather than just give a lip service. Okay. Um, when is the yoga class? That's what we're talking yeah, about. So today. we're gonna do one in the fall. Okay. Um, Shar and I will plan it, but um, she's out this week, so we're both like go go going on the go right now. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm just adding all of my presenters and that kind of thing. But we were thinking a couple of things. One is like, do we do it closer to like Thanksgiving when there's other people in town and families, or is that too crazy of a time of year? Do we want to pull it back and do September or October? Um, just get your opinions on it, what's been done before. I like the idea of doing it like afternoon and into the evening so that people who work can be a part of it. Um, or even if they, if there's somebody who's considering going but could bring like a caregiver or somebody that would go with them just to, to look at it and have conversations together. Um, but we're open, we're open for ideas. I think. So I know Janine's been a part and Sue, but others may have some ideas, yeah. Um, a, a promotional idea because you were talking about sort of the, you know the, the little birds and maybe mm -hmm. miniature paintings or mm -hmm. something like that. There is a new trend opening up. There's only one that I know about, and I'll have to get the address of it to you because it's not in my head. But there's a thing called little free galleries now. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like a little free library, mm -hmm. and it'd be great to put a, a tag on something like a little bird. Um, that said, courtesy of the senior center, such and such, and maybe when you know a date, our open house is date, and put those in the little free gallery mm -hmm. and uh, spread the word out that way. Spread the word out that way because um, they're getting kind of a lot of attention, you know. Sure, and an yeah. open house that's a perfect thing to yeah. put in next door. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the other thing, you know, we talked about the new counselor that um, maybe she could be there. Um, I, well, I think the whole staff would be there. But her to have a booth to, to not to count the people at the time, but to talk about what services are offered. Sure, yeah. Um, and then talk about where they can obtain services. So if I came, well, if, if I came with a parent, um, and said to the counselor, gosh, you know, my, my mother needs some counseling, you know, she also needs food delivery. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a cross. But yeah. there's, there's a cross there, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe it could be the counselor and some of the MOW people, Meal on Wheels people, okay. maybe. Um, also, some of, I think some of your speakers you know, one of the things you mentioned, Megan, is that uh, you had speakers who really were knowledgeable about this, that, and the other, can, and we don't really care how they vote, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> is that maybe we could have, I think Maria Tara Giannis is doing three sessions, mm -hmm. maybe team her up with someone to talk about the forums mm -hmm. as a booth. Mm -hmm. You know, just like... So, if, right. So you're talking presenters versus some of the drop-in programs that we have? Right. Okay. Right. Both. Both. Yep. Both. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that they could, and I, I was thinking of the pool hall over there, that maybe there could be a pool hall competition between teams and there would be a prize. <laughs> um, between who? Just like, just the oh, guys well, that are here? Or? Uh, between and women. And then, okay. yeah, yeah, you could yeah. advertise it beforehand and say we're having, you know, during our open house we're having this pool competition. Nice. You could win a free iPad. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, or just coming in. Yeah. Some, you know, maybe a worry bird, maybe a painting. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, one, That's two, and three for thing. attending. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. I see booths that represent, you know services not just services that we do in in terms of resource but also you know um recreational services and i love it if everybody got the go but they don't and so if each booth had a little list of services also with the artists and the art um classes that they have 
sometimes people are intimidated to sign up because they don't think they'd be up. like I did a, a stained glass one one time and I thought this is way beyond my capability but when I got there I was reassured that yeah this really is something exactly. that you can right. do mm -hmm. and that's something that somebody being in a booth and and showing just mm -hmm. what was done or what was produced and encouraging people in terms of well of course you can do that right also i'd like to see transportation be addressed to make sure that if at all possible we have a via or a van or something that goes to the different housing authority facilities and senior housing um, places that will be able to transport uh, people for the day to the open house and get them back because transportation is also a big issue. It's a great idea. Yeah. And yeah. that would make sure that we get more people here. We can facilitate them as they come in the door, show them where they're going. And I think in previous open houses, we had like food set up uh, that people could go in and, and uh, have food available for them. So um, I think we partnered with Meals on Wheels before. Uh -huh. yeah. I, do, I do believe we did that. Okay. One, so One of the things the board members did was um, sort of take turns being at the front door mm -hmm. and yeah. greeting people and just inquiring, you know, have you been here before? Right. And if they were never had been here before, they were kind of like a tour guide mm -hmm. if they person wanted that and just right. kind of, you know, here's kind of who we are, here's a go, here's, you know, they kind of did that little extra mm -hmm. um, sort of how you well, check warm in. Warm welcome. <laughs> Where you go to check in. What do, what do you do to make a reservation? If you want to get in a class, you're here. Mm -hmm. Well, come on over here because here's where where you would go. Uh, here's where the restrooms are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they got a tour too. Yeah. Yeah. If they want. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I think is that it's it's great mentioned you know not everybody gets the go so they they don't right. really know what we've got right so if they're coming in making sure that either at every one of the booths or maybe greeting at the door we gave them out that, a greeting that, no, that you ask them if they actually received the go and if they would like to then sign up you they know put up. your name on your sign up sheet and we'll make sure that you get on the so my um when I started working here, my confusion with the go is because it's not chronological. It's done by subject and where to find right. things. So I like the idea of having, like, because the gym is so big, maybe we take general interest and history and science, and that's all in the gym. And that's where you can find those things, mm -hmm. and that's the subject that you like, and have it color-coded so that you can go back to the tabs in the go and say, oh, that's a very the, good the yellow idea. is where history and science is, and mm -hmm. humanities is purple, and so humanities will be, like, you know, maybe down in this hallway or something over by mm -hmm. Meals on Wheels, and then we have the art room, which is green, have that, you know. And you might want to talk to Erica about a program for the open house. Mm -hmm. In the gym, you'll find, right. you know, kind of a right. summary thing. Right. The, like other a menu. Thing, yeah, the other thing we did once is we had the bylaws dance. We did not have entertainment and noise a lot because people were talking at sure. roots, but we did have a scheduled something and the bylas uh, dimitiera dance i think we might have had the dulcimers do a mm -hmm. short it was not you had to be really clear it wasn't a performance it was a demonstration okay. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, they they were not oh they do they get paid no they're all our groups our volunteer okay. groups yeah okay so i think you just have to craft that carefully so that it doesn't disrupt the conversation going on at the booths mm -hmm. Um, yeah, be thoughtful about that. One thing is that there's also the video club. Oh, yeah. So um, our, our video might be done. I, the, a video could be done and... I would be surprised know. if that, if the history one was finished, but... Right. But, but yeah, they have yeah, amazing I think, programs. I was thinking of the history mm -hmm. one. I don't know whether that'll be finished yet, but it would be great to, where in the gym where you have the history and the form, to have the video club there. Mm -hmm. I would also like to see, um, 
I think people, are, I'm not really sure whether people are signing up for te the technology classes oh, yeah. mm -hmm. or not, but at least make it, make them aware. Yeah. Make this them aware there. and make it easy for them to understand how easy, I just spoke with someone yesterday who uh, didn't know how to make a meeting on Google. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, have you tried the senior center? They said, well, I've looked at it, but I'm kind of hesitant to go. I said, A, it's free or else it's $2. Mm -hmm. It's either it's A or free B, now. Or it's all free. Like, either way. And they can drop in. Exactly. You, you can drop in and get whatever right, specific. Exactly. You don't have to just take the class. You can drop, drop in, in and get help. Yeah. And you and can get help at home. You can get help at home. So I think showcasing that. That's my in the quieter area, which would be the history forum gym part, because you really need to concentrate. Uh -huh. You know, someone just can't run through it and say, oh, you know, there's an Excel class. You can learn to use Google. Um, mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it just doesn't work that way with technology anymore. It's definitely a sit down right. and look at your specific right. this device. All, this, yeah, and this person also said to me, well, I'm going to go home and try and tackle Zoom. I said, download the app onto your computer. It'll walk you through it. Mm -hmm. But they said, really? I said, yes, you don't have to figure it out. It's mm -hmm. not like the olden days. Right. It's user-friendly. Right, right. So it would be good to to do something around that. Mm -hmm. and maybe wow. you could recruit the van drivers there. I've got four, actually. That have cool. well, I don't know if you've seen, we have a big sandwich board we've been putting yeah. out <laughs> for, yes, I for sports mm -hmm. officials. Anyway. No, I'm just going to say, uh, you know, being realistic, there, there are a lot of seniors that are not on the, you know, they, they don't have computers, they don't mm -hmm. get into them. And I don't know how difficult it would be, and, and you know, a lot of them probably may not even stop here. I mean, I think the big thing is what we could do to get them here mm -hmm. the day of the of the open house could really make a difference on them continuing to come. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how difficult it would be to come up with a one page from oh, yeah. back or whatever of the different activities that are even if we don't uh, even if we don't have to put the date and time and stuff like that, but just of all the different activities that are available to mm -hmm. them. So that they at least have it, they look at it, and they can hopefully call in if they right. they have an interest on that. Uh, you know, the other thing I know that uh, trips, you know, we take some of these trips that are that cost some money, is that you know them knowing uh, that there is uh, there are stipends mm -hmm. available to them. Uh, I don't know how we get them out. I don't know if yeah. we're going to have Having to play with friends, friends is. Yeah. And, and so, tell them, oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, no, Which, exactly. that would be a good thing. But I think that, that how do you get connected art is really true. And I think we need to think differently about what the front desk staff are doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, trying to explain, this is how we do registration. What is a trip lottery? How do you get a scholarship? I think there needs to be a, some focus on just getting connected, getting involved from that sort of logistical place. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, that, you know, one thing about scholarships is that it's not transparent enough. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, I know in the go there's a blurb that I can get a scholarship. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to access it. And also, there's also a... Um, can I say this? You know, if Prudence applies for the scholarship, does that mean that everyone who's on line, you know, who's who's in a physical line, I mean, hears that I need a scholarship? Right, there's a stigma, <laughs> stigma. attached. There's a stigma attached. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to use that word, but you know, how is it so that I understand the transparency of it's like giving out the Chromebooks. You want to make sure that it's this is available to anybody. Right. It doesn't have to be tied to an income source. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So how how can we message that during mm -hmm. the open house? Yep. So that people feel comfortable saying, "Okay, I need this." Right. I was going to say, you know, the front desk is busy on the phone and doing their computer work and everything. 
I've taken, well, pre-pandemic, I've been here and people come in, you know, and they're like this, and like, can I help you? And I'd be willing to step up for two hours a couple times a month right. and just be there to answer <laughs> I questions. I would love that, Susan. That would be really helpful. But, you know, then does the front desk know which day is more busy than yeah, other days, et cetera? Yes. So yes, something to think about. Yes, that would be great. And the front desk is pulled away often to do a quick yeah. know, impromptu tour. Yeah. Right. Um, it's not, but the other thing is we could just do and build that in um, to the so get acquainted so. and just talk about folks who maybe don't want to do a get acquainted whatever. They just want a tour. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, like you do brewery tours, right? You yeah. sign up, you or the tours at Celestial Seasonings. I mean... And the senior teaching seniors model. Having yeah. somebody that already yeah. likes right. it and is already involved in certain programs is why. Yeah, you know the, the old JCC, not the new one, but the old one on foot. Kalima, it was an old one. I don't think he worked at that one. Um, before I moved here, I contacted them and they had a concierge, a young guy who we made an appointment on, online um, and we met with him for like an hour. And we didn't want to tour the JCC because that, you know, the building was about as big as this room. But one of the things that he did was that he said, this is the list of synagogues. This is the list of that. This is a list of that. This is where, do you need help with, you know, do you have a call? <laughs> yes, we have a, we have calls. You know, he had like a menu of things that he reviewed with us. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was really helpful to know what's available. To know what's available, and it wasn't seventeen pages. It was a front and a back sheet mm -hmm. together that he Great just idea. handed us. Mm -hmm. So it was a, 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 and he was called the concierge. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes that's um, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Right. To have. I know I need something. I want to be here and step right. in the door. You've gotten that far, right. but I, I had a list of rec centers. I had mm -hmm. a list of synagogues. Mm -hmm. I had a list of all sorts of things. How to start my electricity. How to start, you know, all of that. Right. So I knew. Mm -hmm. My wish list mm -hmm. would be our, if somebody in the Hispanic community could volunteer to be present. In, in the front lobby, because I know that people are far more comfortable if they see someone that looks like them, if mm -hmm. they talk to someone that Understand. speaks and understands. Otherwise, they're, they're very often hesitant to come in the front door. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know even doing my volunteer work, how sometimes it's really important for Veronica to personally bring somebody to me mm -hmm. and let them know that I'm going to be okay, that they're going to be able to talk to me, right. that it's going to be able to work out. They're going to get all their questions answered. And so that would be important for me mm -hmm. to have somebody out there that can help, right. not behind the glass, <laughs> but right in the right. front door. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking if they ever redesign this center, they would need to redesign that area. The lobby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got some uh, good ideas? Mm -hmm. So I September or October? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably, hopefully September, actually. October is real volunteer appreciation. It's really uh, yeah, right after Labor Day would be great. One more. Um, this might be a good opportunity, and it's probably implied in everything that's been said and done so far, mm -hmm. but to collect some information about services that are not being provided. Right. The that's an excellent yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. Kind of a mini survey of, you might consistently ask, is, are there any things, are there any services you might like to have, or maybe even a little short questionnaire you give people or something on that or we, you know perfect timing we just talked about this at our staff meeting oh, yesterday did you? about oh. no about doing a survey mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i'd love that idea that was a great idea and you're good at that you would help craft some important questions if we did that 
Do you see anything glaring that we're that we need? Just no. Glaring? Yeah, no, I didn't know if that was. I'm like coming up empty on that in, in that area, but. Uh, I didn't know just, that was just stemming from something. Yeah. No, I'd be ha I'd be happy to help, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was just the idea of um, you know that you're, if the focus has been in providing information, mm -hmm. maybe you turn around and pull it in, yeah. right? Instead of just being inundated yeah. with information. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. Do you do you know? I haven't attended classes here in a while. Well, actually, I have. I did the genealogy class. I did a hike. I did. A, I've done. Well, I have a complaint about that. Mm. The whole thing, but anyhow, mm -hmm. um, do we do evaluations after the class? We do for trips and some of the classes, right. but yeah. um, no, we haven't in a while. Because okay. it, it could be, a, and I'm not talking, I'm talking three questions, like when I go to visit my doctor, after every single visit, yeah, I get a five question, three to five question, you know, thing, you know, did my you know, physician listen, whatever the question is, but I get three to five questions, that's it. Mm -hmm. I get that from Ace if I buy a box of nails. I mean, everybody's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't give I don't give stuff. my email to those people, but but for, but they have my email <laughs> and my health plan. So they, when I see the doctor, I get a survey the next day. Right. Um, so you know, just because I, I mean, I can tell you, I took the genealogy class, and the gentleman was a kind gentleman. Nick. Yes. However, the font. You know, I have very good distance vision. Even me with the font, I couldn't read what was on right. his thing. I was like, okay, like that's like totally useless for me. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't have handouts, mm -hmm. which, because I couldn't read, like I can practically read that sign over there. Uh -huh. uh, so my vision is quite good. So. It was really interesting to me because people were like, well, what's that? And, you know, people next to me were whispering. I was like, okay. But you I'll didn't feel like you had a place to be able to tell Nick that you couldn't see it? or Right. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, so I did. was something that... He had something he was going through, and that was his presentation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the basis of his presentation. Right. So if I had an evaluation survey, I would have said, PowerPoint this mm -hmm. instead of going into the website because sure. you can't really see the website. Right. So the SCTC group themselves evaluate every single class, mm -hmm. right. but Nick is with the Longmont Genealogical Society and kind of does it as a side, as a partner. As a side kid. And so that's really great feedback for us to give to Sarah Jane and the team about periodically we need to talk to the genealogy society yeah. about genealogical society about doing some evaluation so i'll i'm yeah, going to see that, sarah that, jane yeah tomorrow, so that's so. just so i'm thinking of an evaluation like people who go take the technology thing mm -hmm. technology classes it'd be good to evaluate them to see whether they actually yeah, so learn. they do all of theirs okay so, they do all this that's great so just kind of as a wrap-up i just want right, to yeah. be mindful but um so at this point, Megan and Char and the team are going to run with picking a date when the building is open, right. start to put action, put these ideas to, to work. The sooner, Megan, you have a date, the better to let the board know, especially so if you are going to be ambassadors and be present and um, kind of help with that outreach. But I think that's the question right now is, is that something you as a board want to want to commit to, is being at the open house and helping with that? Yeah. So, yes. 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 Thank you all very much. That would be great. And, and one, one final thing. Again, speaking more for those people, again, who don't read the newspaper and don't right. have anything like that, one of the things that we get monthly is our, is our utility bills right. uh, as far as putting that on there for the seniors to, to come down. Sure. So, yeah. On the right. Right. city line. Right. Right. So this would be something you really want to be talking to Eric and now about getting it on the the other the other piece that you know can happen, Megan, is folks who are already very well acquainted with us will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's if there, we had talked to Erica about a bring a friend campaign. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And so you might want to ask if this is an opportunity to sort of do that, and again, sort of to idea about what's a prize <laughs> for that yeah. yeah we you know you put a put your name in a hat and 
draw for something. And the Friends would be the group that would sponsor that prize because the okay. city can't sponsor that prize. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> so, anyways, there's ways to make that work. Uh, like door prizes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Those, those are fun things. People love that kind of yeah. art. Would it help with the Hispanic community to try outreaches through the church? You know, trying to find some way to connect. Mm -hmm. Could yeah. we contact perhaps churches that. Yeah. If they would make an announcement, I don't yeah. I I have, see a problem. You know? Yeah, the city line is already available in Spanish, so mm -hmm. yeah. that's a good way to mm -hmm. reach out. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if we could tap Carmen Ramirez, who from the city, whether she has any ideas how to uh, reach. reach out to I even think that Veronica and yeah. Melissa, who they already work with yeah. the senior population, yeah. they might have some outlets Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Before we ask her, <laughs> we ask a lot of favors of her. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we don't ask demographic data. It's okay. it's been That's interesting. That, okay. And and um, there used to be a membership years and years and years and years and years ago, and the board at that time with my request, my recommendation was to do away with membership because it felt elitist, and there were people then who felt like. Um, I already pay my taxes. Why am I have? Why do I have to join this place to benefit from it? And so we moved the membership as an optional thing to the friends of the senior center, and no membership at the senior center was required. That that was the point where you could collect that demographic data, mm -hmm. but it felt elitist and intrusive for at that time, and we did away with it because mm -hmm. it was keeping people from coming. Mm -hmm. I totally respect okay. that. I think that's one of the things that we need to highlight in that video production club. Well, they do it in the Get Acquainted. They do it at the it's front desk. People center. always say, no. do I have to pay a membership Barrier. fee? And the front desk you know, regularly leads with that. Mm -hmm. There is no membership fee. You pay for the activity if it has a free a fee. And if it doesn't, it's, it's, it's drop it. It's free. And the computer tech programs have all gone Free. There are no more charges for the computer tech programs. And that's something we look at for trips and for programs is trying to have a, a range so that everybody's available and we're not doing anything that could exclude somebody from doing something. All right. Well, thank you. Sorry to digress. No, it's a great question. Yes. And, yeah. and um, when we stopped doing the membership fee, the city finance director was not very happy with me. Hmm. Well, hmm. <laughs> Too bad. enough contingencies built into the budget that... Because it, it was it was a easy um, revenue, right? And, and but I'm telling you, we printed those stupid cards. I mean, it was just gross. I couldn't stand any part. I just could, there was nothing I liked about it. Mm -hmm. But contrary, look at what the friends of the senior center have now. Right. You know, two and a half million dollars, and that's that's all a voluntary thing. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with getting to participate. So it works out pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think we should make a motion that Ruth should be here on the uh, open house day and do tennis, table tennis tournaments. <laughs> <I'm only kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> because she likes table tennis. <laughs> table tennis tournament. Any other old business? I think you are free to yeah. leave if that's what yeah. your face is. <laughs> I'm you. open to any questions or comments if you guys want to reach out. But I, think it's, I think it's important to stay connected with Brandy, give her updates, but as soon as you lock a date, let us know. Let mm -hmm. Let mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can call us as soon as you can. Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I've got to be at the airport maybe 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock at the end of the morning yet. Discussion with the TV production. Yeah, I, I thought that Carrie was going to be here, so I I did not close the loop with her. It's my uh, July. Maybe well, so um, so let me um, let me just say uh, the TV production club. I think I said this last month. Very excited to run with the documentary. Carrie had a trip to Czechoslovakia and okay. somewhere else, so she's out of the country. Um, so let me get back with her and try and line her up for either July or um, or August, and okay. then get that. And I I don't know I lost I totally lost track of that. So that was under. Are you thinking about retirement or something? Thinking about all the things that I have three days <laughs> yeah. to finish. So you know if if they're going to um, if they're in the middle of the documentary for the open house, they could still play clips. Correct. Trailers. Correct. Right. Trailers. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. And we did the H twelve conversation. July meeting. So this, um, historically, the boards, both the Friends and the Advisory Board, have taken a month off in the summer. We were often closed that first Wednesday in July with building closure. We are not this year because uh, that's July 6th. Um, I think it's the 6th. So you don't need to, but I'm just throwing it out there just to... I will be gone that week. I'll be gone too. Week. First week of July. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's looking you like... You too. Okay, no meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I make a motion that we 
resume our meetings in August and skip the July meeting. Second. 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 Julie. I have a question about that. Given that our reports, our quarterly reports come up in July, uh, in August, I'm going to be gone uh, the first week in August. So if I can give my um, AAC report next, well, no, this that is, is June. June. This is June. Yeah. Uh, July. Okay. So I'll, uh, well, I'll work something out. I'll probably do a written report yeah. and, and give it to you. Okay. All right. And maybe we should, first. yeah, maybe we should change quarterly reports and eliminate July and make it August, August or June, one or the other. Well, and we you added, unless an item needs more immediate attention. Right. So I think it gives you the freedom to do it in August if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Let's change or that in August, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're changing the reports to August? Mm -hmm. It just makes more sense because historically we can't get a quorum in July. Okay. Can I make this that You have January, April, August, October, December. Eliminate the January one. We should have a December one. Oh, the that's, that's December. Correct. Good. So we'll do it April, August, October, December. Thank you. Okay. Then regular business. I already gave my report. You gave your report. Okay. Welcome to City Council Liaison Report. Wow. Okay. Um, and I've been trying to save it all up for this. Um, let's see. First of all, well, my housing authority and we had a, a really interesting work session of the council last night. So it wasn't a formal council meeting and no motions could be enacted or anything like that. But we really talked about uh, affordable and attainable housing uh, policy and a lot of stuff that is going to, um, I hope, lead to uh, increased density in, in the uh, infill uh, parts of the city uh, because we're running out of land. And uh, it is a, a, a social equity thing that we all care about in terms of allowing people who are our frontline workers, like grocery stores, even school teachers, there's a huge amount of data about how much better it is for students if their teacher lives in the same town as they do. Um, so, you know, we're trying to enable the low, lower income workers to move, who have jobs in Longmont, to move back into Longmont. Um, this is probably not going to affect the historic neighborhoods um, because we have so many special ordinances about the historic pres preservation. But um, in our peripheral neighborhoods, there is so much land, so much street parking, you know, all the stuff that is really a, a matter of dispute in the older neighborhoods. Just there's a lot of waste in, in the periphery of the city. And so we're hoping to change our land use and building code ordinances to, to sort of take up the waste. And that should make it more affordable for people to live in Longmont. Um, I think we need, we didn't discuss the demographics of it, um, but you know, we have, we have people who are gonna be wanting to downsize. For example, my neighbors who are, you know, new empty nesters and their, their house is probably twice the size of mine. I live in a house that I downsized into and it's teensy. Um, and they can't afford to downsize because their new house would cost as much as their old house. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're trying to fix stuff like that that does ap apply to seniors. A big part of that is transit. You know, it's it's a, if is via is probably the best thing about the RTD service in Longmont. Um, and I, we certainly are going to eliminate that. I'm working with a, a, 
as I said before, a collective impact team through the economic development partners um, to try to find ways to improve intracity transit without competing with, without violating the RTD charter, which means that the city can't tax anyone to do it and the city can't administer whatever the transit is. So it has to be something like Brewhop that is private, right? Now, Brewhop is, is a for-profit entity, but it could be a non-profit entity. And so, for example, the vice president of, of uh, uh, Front Range Community College, which is the, pres the president of the, of, of the Longmont campus, uh, wants to be a subscriber when this thing happens. And one of the consequences of that would be, um, you know, there's, I think there's, there's probably a gap of people who maybe want to drive less, uh, but are not, um, you know, in the, in the via kind of range of needing uh, differently able to transit and, you know, doorstep to doorstep uh, transit. And I think it would be a big improvement in the city for that. Um, and we discussed in the, in the front part of the meeting uh, at least two things that, that probably could be done as part of that impact group if the board is interested in working with us or maybe I should be taking it to the friends. Um, one is as a as a demonstration to you know to see how important it would be to to uh, older adults in the city, um, we could probably arrange pickup and delivery to the senior center open house or to other important events held at the senior center. So I would like to find out if there's any interest in in doing that. Um, and then uh, as the, other, the other one is the farmer's market. Um, we're already looking at demonstrations from neighborhoods um, like Kensington that are in the, um, the census tract of lower income or you know, certain demographics mm -hmm. um, to take people to the farmer's market because they're in, you know, they're in a food desert probably, and especially it's hard to buy high quality, uh, high quality fresh fruits and vegetables and even meats. But you can use uh, SNAP and not relevant to older adults, but WIC um, benefits, and you get a two for one deal at the at the senior center. So getting there is the problem, and. Uh, so the, I wanted to bring up the idea of whether the, uh, I don't think the board can because that would be city funding, but maybe the friends uh, could um, help fund some of these demonstrations because, I mean, you know, when you start paying a bus service, whether it's VIA or whether it's Brewhub, because this, you know, we use Brewhub for the buses for a lot of other things. Um, uh, you have to pay their expenses because they just don't have enough margin in their business to donate it. If the activity was about the senior center, mm -hmm. then then you would go through Brandy and she would work out the funding request to the friends. Mm -hmm. So if it was transportation for the open house, then Brandy would just go to the friends and talk about paying for that. That would be an appropriate thing. Mm -hmm. Transportation, the farmer's market, or some of those others, no. But certainly... Mm -hmm. For the, the senior center, yeah, that's a totally appropriate. Okay, wonderful. Because um, it, you know, it, I think it would be a, a game changer in terms of quality of life in Longmont if if that sort of targeted transit were were available. Yeah, I know we I, lose clients coming here because they can they have to give up their car for one reason or another and we no longer see them here. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't, the parking lot is a mile long. Right. It, it, you know, the other thing I wondered, 
continuously was <laughs> we hear more and more about RTD and their lack of funds and their lack of services. Where are we going to be here in the long run if we don't start looking at other alternatives to relying on RTD, which has already cut so many routes that, you know, their routes are going to be dependent upon their funds and long term do we need to not just for the senior center or the farmers market but for in general for our yes. citizens to be looking at alternative to cars and mm -hmm. good transportation systems i agree obviously i'm you know volunteering <laughs> time for it right. and and bringing it up every 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 point in the city I touch. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that there's an appropriate use for the Senior Center. Um, I, I would be looking forward to having a contact at the Friends because I don't right now, and that's my fault. I haven't made any effort to develop it, but um, now's the time, I think. Uh, so and, and Susan and Brandy will be your conduits to the Friends. So okay. Uh, Brandy couldn't be here today, but but Susan sits on there as an advisory board rep, so. Wonderful, okay. Well, then I do have a contact. You do, you do. I just uh -huh. didn't know it. Susan RTD, right. reason to drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's right, because they, you know, they've you shrunk Longmont's service down, and they optimize their service to minimize the number of buses and drivers that are required which means they end up with this long route that loops around the city. And it doesn't can, go where you need it to go. It doesn't go where you need it to go, so you've still got blocks to walk once you get as close as the bus will take you. And if you are a, if you are a senior in particular, it's a marathon to spend 45 minutes on a jouncy, jiggly, uh, Right, they, they're not modernized. They're too big. I mean, this. I, yeah. I mean, it, the whole thing is, and and I understand that the taxpayers are paying for it. What can I say? Yes. I can say for forty years, <laughs> right. RTD has not served Longmont well. Right. Reason to drive, and right. honestly, honestly, I believe that with Time enough community support, if we can put, I I think there's a loophole, which is if a group puts forth a, an RFP. <laughs> to RTD that says, we want this service, what will it cost us? And they come back with a no bid, then that gives us a get out of jail free card. I'm not sure of the legalities of this yet, you know, but I have it through the city transit that it is, there's at least a, a, a narrow winding legal route to, because what, what we should be doing with them is is to just have the intra-city touch points for the bus, right? The bus rapid transit, okay, that. And that will be what they do for Longmont, and the other thing they do for Longmont is to get out of the way and let us, the community, put together something that's better for the community than yeah, what like they provide. Yeah, like routes that people need to travel. Yes, like, like to the hospital, right? To the grocery for, store. To the grocery store. More than twice a day. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And not so I, taking up half your day to get there. Well, you know, I think, uh, I hate to bring this up, but uh, I know that the mayor is the point person and the lead mm -hmm. on getting RTD to work. And has she, has the mayor, um, have any of these ideas been run past the mayor? Because mm -hmm. that's her ba baby. The mayor is on the collective impact group right. with me um, and and doing her part. You know, she, she is the one who brought in um, the VIA people to the collective impact group. She brought in Bruja and they are both very dedicated to this because they would like to expand their businesses maybe find subsidies for the electrification of their offerings because both of them understand that diesel oh, is not the way to go you know so uh i think everybody involved considers it a win-win it's just going to be a narrow and winding path okay. and, 
as you look at the collective impact, and I'm just letting go at this, but we are getting the feedback back from the LHA properties, and there is definitely some interest from the properties around some regular trips. Mm -hmm. And you may or may not be a Walmart fan, but Walmart is uh, a good destination because it has groceries, pharmacy, pharmacy mm -hmm. it has a breadth of things. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be another area for that collective impact to take a look at, not just the, the LHA properties, but all the senior properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll right. Look at that. Yeah. And, you know, until the movement has gotten to the point where um, we can go to primary employers and say, here's your subscription fee, right. what routes do you need, and have that negotiation, which is how it will turn from an, a collective impact into a nonprofit that is a going concern. Um, you know, until then, we're going to be scrambling for money. Well, that's so, why a lot of Boulder people, you know, I have a friend who works for NCAR, and she gets a pass. Free. Mm -hmm. Well, city and Longmont employees do, Boulder yeah. County employees do. But this right. is for buses. Right. Yeah. Uh, for RTD, rather. Right. Um, you know, and, and what, we're, what we're thinking is, you know, if the, the way it would work is a, a primary employer subscriber that has a lot of, a lot of employee visitors, there are huge benefits for them. Right. So they become subscribers, their employees do get passes. Right. Is a, just an information source, Marcia, if you're mm -hmm. not aware, there is the um, Mobility for All Countywide Committee mm -hmm. meets the second Monday at 2 o'clock. Um, Veronica from our team took over my spot on that group. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like all things mobility. So we talk about everything from electric scooters, electric cars, bike paths, RTD, VIA, it's just kind of a broad look at mobility and moving people to where from where they are to where they want to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I can send you some information about oh, that. Oh, okay, because I was about I to take that. a note. Yep, I will um, do that. Well, yeah. But that might be something you might want to just sit in on, kind of see what the scope of that work is. But as a collective, the group has written letters to RTD, we have done oh, yeah. some different whatevers. <laughs> we have um, brought in RTD people and they have been very uncomfortable. So I guess- <laughs> but, but nothing has happened. Because who's got the power? Exactly, that, they have the your point. tax dollars. Yes. So yes. they don't really think it's an inform, it, is it informative, I think is what it is. Uh, no, I, I, thing, so. I was not aware and that's very good. The other thing is um, the beneficial electrification Residence committee is right. about to wrap up a couple couple more meetings, um, and I'm working on how to um, stay connected. Is what we're you know the things that we're working on make it onto the the city's work plans for the different departments, and I know for a fact that. Um, this is a, this is a senior issue not only because of the low income segment. It's, I mean, my guess about senior de demographics would be that that it um, there is a divide. You know, fewer seniors are sort of in the middle, and you either made yourself comfortable in mm. retirement or you didn't. Yeah, and um, and and. That doesn't necessarily necessarily translate to income as opposed to agency where, yeah, I can buy a new furnace anytime I feel like it. Right. Or I can't, you know. And um, but it's a senior for all of us because many live in older neighborhoods. The electric service to the house is not as high as it could be not up to the standard that we have now um, for new buildings and the cost of upgrading that to go from gas to electric is pretty high. It's a one-time cost, but it can be three to $5,000, which even for the comfortable seniors, that's an ouch, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, I think that groups like this one need to stay hooked in in terms of understanding the cost and making sure that we are the city stays after finding the grant money, find, finding the capability because 
you know, overall electrification is going to be better for the city in every way, but if a segment or more one or more segments are excluded, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. Marcia, has the city quit with authorizing gas for new development? Yeah, uh, well, no, not yet. And put aside. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gas for new development. What, I hate to be long-winded, but I'm, the temptation is so strong. <laughs> um, so at, at the last beneficial electrification meeting, um, the, uh, the leadership you know, which is a, a, a person from a consulting group and a person from um, Longmont Power, um, had the gas for new building prohibit prohibition ban in something like 2035. Yeah, it's... And, and it, which was ridiculous, right? Because, I mean, yeah, the, the gas ban is going to be in 2040 or something because we can't force people to pull out their gas furnaces. But... No new buildings, that's the lowest hanging fruit. Well, there was me, there was someone, there was a member from NCAR, um, there was a member from a, a, a solar company, you know, a lot of people who were into the deep technology of electrification, and we all stood up and said, that's backwards. That's the low hanging fruit. Do that in 2025, which is the next time the, the next round of codes updates come, come in, which is already a little late. But the codes don't prevent any of that right now, right? Yes. No, the, code, no. the codes don't prevent it. Um, but the big developers are not they're not proposing gas anyway, right? They're coming in with all electric proposals because it saves them buku money. I don't know what happened front. across the street from us. They're all gas. They're all gas. Yeah. <laughs> Where is pro across the street from you? On Olympia and Prairie Village. KB all of that. Katie, every single one of those homes. So they not only have all gas, but mm -hmm. we had to have our gas lines hooked into to support that. And I thought, where are we going? I mean, mm -hmm. where this this has been going on just for the last two years? It feels like a century, but um, but it, it, we're going to keep putting in gas lines. We're going to keep putting in gas furnaces and gas stoves. Mm -hmm. and So the impact is not going to happen until 2045 or 2145. Isn't, yeah. isn't there some state legislation that just came up that is going to require local jurisdictions to have codes that prohibit gas and um, encourage? There is, there's, um, that state legislation re uh, requires um, municipalities to upgrade the IPCC codes um, more often rather than staying six or eight years behind. Um, but uh, I don't think that it sets a date certain for prohibiting. And I bet your Polish doesn't sign that. Oh, um, yeah, there's that. Now, yeah, I, I'm sure he would not. I mean, because what you're, you're doing is that you're forcing people and you're forcing developers. KB is very powerful. All of those people are extremely, that's why we're getting a cost cut. These people have power and they have tax revenue. And, and they have gas. Yes. And, and they have gas. And, and, and the whole point is, I think about all, all of the seniors that are going to be looking at having to replace a furnace and go from <laughs> gas to electric, which in today's world ain't saving any money. But, you know, I don't want to see them being forced right. to change that right. when big developments like KB can, mm -hmm. can exactly. put right. gas lines in and put gas in every single house they develop. And it's the opposite of that. You know, I mean, city employees are really, except for you, Michelle, <laughs> <laughs> and the people you hire are really conservative. You know, they... They are really averse to big change as a group. And so, um, you know, the Beneficial Electrification Committee was arguing and because the philosophy that we're going forward with is we need to put the stop on new stuff that doesn't hurt anybody. 
right? But uh, including developers, because if you said it came, well, I think that's but, what you need to say it or say. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. They, right. They get yeah, to we're all saying they we're all saying that, um, and and we need to stop that. We are never going to force someone to replace an appliance before it's dead. And what we need to do is at least provide parity so that if, if you don't have the means yourself, it's at least no more expensive to replace with electric than it would be to replace with gas. You know, it makes me think of when, when Longmont, when we first had cable and everybody's yards were getting dug up for cable. And older adults had no, I mean, to afford, to afford cable was really expensive for some older person, older people. Mm -hmm. And yet you had no choice. Your yard was getting dug up for cable. And we did the cable trust and we did a lot of advocacy to try and make sure that older people and lower income people had access to that new technology, I guess, I'd call it cable. But I, I would hope that in a much more preventative way because we have more we've we got years we can figure out a similar kind of thing that we start building that pot we start building that process so people who can't afford to make that transition can at the same time do i think what dave and janine are saying yeah. and, and you were saying is get out ahead of it a little bit more mm -hmm. i'll make a motion to adjourn was that the last finished? item on the agenda? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I think the discussion can still go on. I'm not sure whether you the board adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Adjourn the meeting. I see well, Susan has closed her book. Uh, you, I thought it went to noon. Yeah, okay. but the reports but are we've, quarterly. We've so. covered everything. Okay. Okay. We can still talk about this. You need a second. Yeah. Second, anybody? I'll second. Julie, second. There we go. There we go.